a quick tour of ayat and ahadith to reintroduce ourselves to ourselves. Who are you as a Muslim in the eyes of the maker of the universe? Who are you in the eyes of the king, al-malik, the sovereign Allah? And what does it mean to be part of the ummah of Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wassalam? Allah jalla jalaluhu, he said, kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas. You, O Muslims, are the best of communities ever raised for humanity. Ta'muruna bil ma'rufi wa tanhawna anil munkari wa tu'minuna billah. You encourage the good, you forbid the evil, and you accept Allah as your Lord. So you are the people chosen by Allah jalla jalaluhu, my brother. Them. You, you know the way, and you go the way, and you show the way. Ibn Majah generates on the authority of Muawiyah al Qushayri that the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam he said, "You, O Muslims, are the last of seventy nations to walk this earth. However, you are the greatest and most noble of those nations in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa taala." Allah, the believer, occupies a position of honor and karama with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If he was to be aware of its reality, his heart would skip a beat and would flutter with joy. His heart and his soul would soar with ecstasy and bliss to know of your position with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you would long and yearn to meet him today before tomorrow to embrace this position in full. How cherished must you be as a Muslim for Allah Jalla Jalaluhu to announce, Man adali waliyya. فقد آذنته بالحرب any person who shows enmity towards an ally of mine, I, Allah Almighty, will declare war on him. How cherished must you be in the eyes of Allah for the Prophet Sallallahu to say, I swear by the one who possesses my life. The killing of a single believer in the eyes of Allah is more severe than the destruction of the entire dunya. How cherished must you be in the eyes of Allah for the Prophet Sallallahu to say, if the people of the heavens and all of the people on the earth were to gather to kill a single believer, Allah Allah would not hesitate to toss them all into the hellfire. This is your position in the eyes of Allah Jalla Jalalu. Who can take that away? And for those of us who are still not sure about who we truly are, you will come to know towards the end of time when Isa, Jesus, son of Mary alayhi salam, will descend as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam described and prophesied. He told us how he will descend from the heavens at a time known to Allah, wearing his beige robe, his fine hair glistening as though pearls were dropping from his head alayhi salatu wasalam. His hands resting on the wings of angels. It is such a spectacle when he arrives there in Damascus, in the east of Damascus, next to the white minaret. That is where he will arrive. And when he comes down and the world is watching and the Christians are there to receive him, they have spent thousands of years worshipping this individual alayhi salatu wasalam. And everyone is waiting to see where will he walk? Whom will he play? his hands with and they see Prophet Isa arriving and taking a path with the Muslims and will insist to pray behind one of us in salah to hear the Quran of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He said alayhi salatu wasallam, Jesus son of Mary will arrive. The leader of the Muslims at the time will say to Isa, come, O Prophet of Allah, lead us in salah. He will say, la, no, you are the leaders of one another because Allah has honored this nation, he will say. You lead me in prayer, you are the leaders. This is your religion that you subscribe to. Which way of life is it that has survived the test of time? Which philosophy out there that has survived survived critique, criticism, like the religion of Islam has survived. Despite us today living in an age of science, information, technology, discovery, when people have become disillusioned with their own religions, leaving their faith in droves, they see it incompatible. During the same phase, we see droves of people choosing Islam. This is the religion of Allah Tanzeel min Hakim min Hamid. Which way of life other than Islam is it that has proven its ability to provide peace? To provide tranquility, to provide inner calm, which every other religion claims. Which religion has proven its potency and capability of delivering it as Islam has done there in the heart of Gaza, the world has seen with young and old, educated and otherwise saying in the peak of tragedy and at the epicenter of adversity, they say, Alhamdulillah, this is the decree of Allah. We are content with his decision. We are the ones whom Allah has blessed with Salatul Isha. No other nation prayed Salatul Isha. That is unique to us. Allah has gifted you with Laylatul Qadr, a night that is better than 80 years of ibadah. Add it to your scales. No other nation had that. We are the people whose Salah, whose prayer resembles the form of the angels. They pray like we do. We are the Ummah that Allah Almighty sends a Mujaddid, a revivalist, every 100 years to rejuvenate its state of affairs. That is unique 
to you. Ours is the greatest religion. Ours is the greatest ummah. Ours is the most distinguished messenger. And ours is the most profound scripture. Alhamdulillah that Allah has chosen us. Yawm al-Qiyamah, however, this will be when we will realize the true value of a Muslim. There when the sun hangs dangerously low one mile above your head. And the first of and the last of humanity are gathered in a single expanse of land. And man will flee from his wife and siblings and prophets and messengers from their nations. Fear, terror, uncertainty will be the mood of the hour. And then paradise and hellfire are laid bare for humanity to see their two destinations. Then when it's time, Allah Almighty will descend in a manner that is befitting of His majesty and glory to begin the judgment. And amidst all of this, an announcement is made. Ahmad narrates on the authority of Abdullah ibn Abbas that the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when Allah decides that it is time to begin the judgment between people on the day of reckoning, a caller will call, where is Muhammad and his ummah? He said, therefore, we are the last and we are the first. He said, we are the last nation to walk the earth, but we will be the first for Allah Almighty to relieve us from the pain of the day of judgment. And then he said, imagine then the nations of the world, when they hear our name being called out, they will split into two parts, creating a path, he said, and we will cross between the nations, making our way to our Lord, and they will be observing us with light emanating from our faces and our hands, radiant with the light. And then the nations will say in awe and amazement, that nation was almost prophets in its entirety. That nation, you, was almost prophets in its entirety. That day, you will know what your value is and what your value was before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet of Allah, Nuh, will stand before Allah for his interrogation. Allah will ask him, Hal ballagda? Did you convey your message to your people? He will say, yes, my Lord, I conveyed. Then Allah will turn to the people of Nuh. Did he convey the message? And they will lie. They will say, Ma ja'ana min nadir. No warner ever came to us. No messenger was sent. They want to save their necks from Jahannam. So Allah will say to Nuh alayhi salam, Man yashhadu lak? Who will testify for you? He will say, Muhammad wa ummatuh. Muhammad and his community will testify that I conveyed. So Allah will bring us and he will ask us and we will say, Prophet Nuh has conveyed to his people, O oh Allah. You are a witness for the prophets and messengers on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Then the bridge is established on the back of Jahannam. Who will be the first to cross, I wonder? The messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, The bridge will be established on the back of Jahannam, and I and my Ummah will be the first nation to cross over into Jannah. And there is another surprise waiting for the believer. When we discover that amongst us, there are around 70,000 who will be chosen just from this Ummah to enter Jannah with no suffering or accountability. At-Tirmidhi narrates on the authority of Abu Umamah that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Allah has promised me that on the Day of Judgment, He will nominate 70,000 from my Ummah to enter Jannah with no suffering, no accountability. And then he said, and from every thousand, from the 70, another 1,000, Allahu Akbar. He said, and on top of that, three handfuls from the handfuls of my Lord Umar. He said, Allahu Akbar, when he heard this. And will you be happy to know that if Allah Almighty allows us to enter Jannah, we, the Muslims, will be 50% of of the population of Jannah. He said to his companions, would you be happy if you were a quarter of the people of Jannah? They said, we would be. He said, would you be happy if you were one third of the people of Jannah? They said, we would be. He said, I swear by Allah who possesses my life, I hope that you will be half of the people of Jannah. That is your status. Why walk in the street with your head down in shame and disgrace? This is your position. Raise your children upon these meanings. Don't allow your children to see themselves despite the brutality and the normalization of killing your children to see themselves in any light other than what I just described for you. It is normal that an ummah like ours will experience adversity and genocide and ethnic cleansing and killing. It's normal. We are to expect this. We are the leaders of humanity. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees that we as Muslims are not leading humanity at any time in the period of history, Allah will send us painful events to shock us and to jolt us back onto the path of leadership that Allah intends. Raise your children and remind Mind them. It's the finest of people who are tested in life. Tell them this. Tell your child that it is the finest of metals that experience the fiercest of fires. Tell them how it is the brightest lights in life that draw the deepest shadows. Tell them how it is the tree that is filled with fruits that attracts stones. Tell them how precious things in life are challenged. They are not ignored. We are attracting adversity, not because we are weak, but because we are worthy. 